So we're making really good progress here. As you can see, this piece is already coming along quite well. It'll look even better once we get our textures and materials applied at the end. But for now, we just need to kind of trudge through and finish this. So I think the next piece I'll make is whatever this is right here. I mean, these are all just little nuts and bolts and different pieces kind of fused together. So we're just going to try our best to create the general object of what we see in the reference photo. It doesn't really have to be perfect. So what I'm going to do here is try to replicate this by adding in a plane and then just adjusting the plane into this shape. So let's press Shift A. We'll go to Mesh and then Plane. We'll go into our top view. Wireframe and then just scale this down. And we're going to place this right over here, right on top of this little piece. We'll rotate it maybe 45 degrees or so. Scale it down some more. And then just get it roughly in the correct location. Somewhere around here should be okay. So now we just need to start kind of extruding this plane here until it matches the curvature. So let's scale it down just a little bit more. And let's start on this edge here. So that way it's kind of flush with the edge. And then we're just going to first of all extrude out to create this little curvature here. So let's tab into edit mode. We'll select this top edge, press E to extrude, just kind of pull it out here and scale it down until we have that curvature going. We're kind of missing this part, it's outside of the bounds of our plane. So let's add in a loop cut with Control R. We'll add that in and then right click to cancel and then scale this out until we have the curvature matched. All we're really doing is just extruding and scaling until it matches the reference photo. So let's select this edge here and pull it back a little bit. And then we'll just kind of start extruding the rest of this. We'll extrude out, rotate with the R key, extrude out again, rotate a little bit with the R key. You should get the gist by now. Just some more extrusions and then rotations. And it just matches the overall topology of the reference photo pretty well. That's what I'm going for. Then we'll do one more extrusion to this edge here. Rotate it. Put it right to about there. I think that looks pretty good. And yeah, I don't think we really have to do anything else. At this point, we can go back into solid view and take a look. We might have to pull this up so that way it's on top. So right about here. And now we can just add a solidify modifier to this piece to make it more thick and then we'll add a bevel modifier to make it nice and rounded. So let's snap this to the top face of the cylinder. We'll grab it on the z-axis and hold control to snap it. Might have to do it outside of the bounds of this box, otherwise it's going to snap to that box instead. So grab on the z-axis and then snap it to that face. And then we can just add a solidify modifier in. So add modifier and then solidify. That looks good. And keep in mind, if your scale is not uniform, meaning all these values are different, then the solidify might not work as it should. So just always make sure your scale is applied. Uh, I usually just do it every single time I add in a new object, apply the scale. Then we'll just adjust the thickness up a little bit. Not super high, maybe to about here. Yeah, I think that looks good. And then what we can do is add a bevel modifier to kind of smooth out the edges. So let's select this object and then make sure it has some smooth shading applied to it. So right click shade smooth. Some of these aren't being smooth because the angle is too steep. So in here for the auto smooth we can just increase the angle until that issue is fixed. I think that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and add in our bevel modifier. So we'll put that in. Let's change the limit method to angle like that. Then we can just kind of adjust the offset here and the segments. We'll put this to a segment count of maybe three should be okay. And then adjust the offset so that way it isn't as harsh here. Maybe 0 0.0003, just something very tiny. And then we still have some ridges here on the side so we also need to increase the angle of the limit method. So just drag this up until that issue is fixed. I think that looks pretty good. And this still looks a little bit ugly. It just looks really low poly and just nasty. 
So one final thing we can do to give this more subdivisions is to apply a subsurf modifier. And it's going to work very well in this case because we haven't actually added in any sort of end gons or weird cuts. So it should apply a subsurf fairly well. So we'll just go to add modifier and then subdivision surface to smooth that out some more. Maybe give it a viewport count of two just for even more smoothness. I think that looks good. And then here in the bevel modifier, let's just make sure our hardened normals is turned on to kind of clean up the shading. I don't think it made too much of a difference, but it's always good to turn on. And yeah, I think that piece looks pretty darn accurate to the reference photo. Now I'm just going to select this and slide it over to the edge. So we'll just kind of pull it over this way. Maybe rotate it a little bit around the z-axis. Let's get it nice and close to the edge there. And at this point, all we have to do is add in this little screw. It looks like there's a screw in there. And there's a pretty cool add-on to get screws really quickly. If we go up here to Edit and then Preferences, and then go to Add-ons, we can search for Bolt Factory. You can just type in B-O-L-T for Bolt, and then tick that on. This comes with Blender. You don't have to download anything. Just tick that on. And now if we go and press Shift-A and then go to Mesh, you're going to see an object here for Bolt. We'll just turn that on, we'll select it. I'm gonna change the model here to Bolt, it should be that by default. For the bit type, I'll change this to Phillips, just for a nice little effect. And then if we pull this up, it's a little bit too big right now, we're gonna to have to really scale this down. You can see that we have ourselves a nice little Phillips screw here, which we can put right inside of our newly created object. So we'll pull this down a little too far, pull it over, and then just scale it down until it is about the size it should be. So we'll just pull this over a little bit more, maybe about there, and then just pull it straight down until our screw is just right on top of it. So I think that's just a nice little extra added effect to our object. And if you really want to get technical, you can also select this, give it some smooth shading, and then turn on your auto smooth just so that way there's no sort of ridges around this part. Now this object is so tiny and out of the way that it's not even worth going out of our way to give any bevel to it. We can barely even see the edges let alone if there is a bevel there. So we can just leave it how it is and get on to the next pieces.